And we want to welcome our friend Lemuel Domingo. Uh, he's a student at Marietta Bible College, uh, about to graduate in a week. How about that? Um, He likes it there so much at Marietta, he wants to do another year. And he's also uh, just gotten engaged, so he's got a lot going on in his life, but he's here to preach for us today. All right, good morning. Amen. It's always good for me to come here. I always appreciate beautiful churches. And the first time I came here, I noticed all those windows you had. They're very beautiful. But anyhow, uh, it's glad to be back here. And today we celebrate Mother's Day. And for more than 100 years now, you started celebrating Mother's Day here in America. And then now the whole world is celebrating Mother's Day. And I remember my mom used to always put me on her lap when I was a little child looking like those kids here earlier, put me on her lap and always every night teaching me how to pray. And uh, she tells me to repeat after me. And then I remember those times. It's been four years now since I last time I saw my mom because I was here in Amer- I'm here in America studying. But happy Mother's Day for, to all the mothers who are here. And uh, we always appreciate you all the times and all the life that you have sacrificed for us, we really appreciate you. Praise God for all the mothers, amen? Amen. And um, again, my name is Brother Lemuel, Lemuel or Lemuel, Lem is easier. And you can find my name in Proverbs 31. And uh, I believe that's where the most popular verse for Mother's Day is also found, Proverbs 31. And verse 30 or 29, beauty is vain, something like that. But the, but the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And, uh, and then speaking of Proverbs, also in Proverbs 14, and as some people practice every day, they read Proverbs because Proverbs has 31 chapters. And today, May 14th, our Proverbs is Proverbs 14. And if you can open your Bible, you can open it in verse 1. It says there, that the wise woman, every wise woman, buildeth her house. And it's just interesting that uh, Mother's Day, we celebrate the day for mothers. And in Proverbs 14, also talks about the wise woman. And then in Proverbs 15, you can see the first verse, it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath. I don't know why after praising the wise woman, it talks about a soft answer. For, I don't know, mothers also? No. (laughs) But here, we're not going to talk about mothers anymore. But now, we're going to talk about a very simple, yet very profound doctrine in the Bible. Belief, or what do we call is our fundamental doctrine in the Bible, which is the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19, we're going to look at this section of Scripture that is very important in that we need to understand it and we need to grasp, we need to embrace, we need to believe on it because this is our very most important doctrine in the Bible, in the Scriptures, which talks about the resurrection the resurrection, first of all, of Christ, and the second, which is the resurrection for the believers. But, if, but before we go and read the Word of God, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father, I come before you this morning. God, we acknowledge, I acknowledge that you are sovereign. You are almighty. You are all-powerful. You are all-knowing. You are the God who created all things, and yet, Lord, we can call you our Father. Lord, thank you, because you are a loving Father. You have made us experience your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your loving kindness, your faithfulness, your goodness. 
your forgiving spirit. Lord, thank you so much for making us experience all these things. Truly, O Lord, I can but agree to the psalmist when he said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Who are we, Lord, that the God of heaven, the God of all things, would even think about us? Think about me, a wretched sinner, a worm, nothing. But thank you, Lord, for the work of your Son on the cross. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died for our sins, buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures lord thank you for saving us and for the work of the lord jesus christ and we give you all the glory help us as we try to study your word i pray god that you open our hearts and our minds this morning and through the help of the holy spirit give us understanding and wisdom that we would be able to apply it in our lives thank you lord and we give you all the glory in jesus name we pray amen 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. The Bible says, if you can, please follow me with your eyes. You don't have to stand. Verse 12 says, this is what Paul said, Now, if Christ be preached that you rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And by the way, don't worry. I will not keep you long because I know this is a very special day and some of us are excited to come out and celebrate this day with our moms but this is what the what the word of god says now if christ be preached that you rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead and then in verse 13 but if there be no resurrection of the dead then is christ not risen and if christ be not risen then our preaching vain and your faith also vain Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Verse 16, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sin, you are still in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep, those who are dead, just that just is that is just a euphemism for the word death and for those Christians who died first. And Paul said, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. They are lost if there is no resurrection. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. We are of all men most miserable pitiable folks i believe that to think correctly is to live properly when you have the right set of mind or thinking you would be able to live correctly that's why our parents always teaching us what to do and not what to do what not to do because to li- to think correctly is to live properly now here in this chapter in this section of scripture Paul has written a letter to the Corinthian church because he heard that some of them in the church, believers, and yet they don't believe in the resurrection. That's why Paul went ahead and defended the resurrection. He said, if Christ Christ be not risen, then everything is in vain. And then he said seven things, seven downsides, if there was no resurrection. But here, folks, I believe that getting the doctrine right will help us get everything in our life right. We need to learn and understand the right doctrine, not only the right doctrine, but the fundamental doctrine, which is the resurrection. And as I said earlier, some of the believers here in the Corinthian church do not believe in the resurrection. Maybe some of them were former Jews or Sadducees, a religious sect in Jerusalem that do not believe in the resurrection. They were converted from being a Sadducee to a Christian, and yet they still don't believe in the resurrection. That's why these Sadducees, they are called sad, you see. They are sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. But us today, you know, when I, the first time I came here, the last time I was here, people are smiling, people are happy. And then now, the second time I'm here, people are still happy. Greet you with those smiles and, you know, people are happy because we believe in the resurrection. 
Because we have a risen Savior. That's why I believe that you are happy today. But folks here, I want to tell you that without faith in the resurrection, there won't be any Christianity at all. This is our fundamental doctrine. And we need to understand it. In the year 1899, I wasn't born yet that time, of course, 1899, in the Philippines, my country, I am from the Philippines, Southeast Asia. If, you, if you're going to look at your world map later, it's on the southeastern part of the world, Southeast Asia, Philippines. And in 1899, this was the time when your country, your army, came down to the Philippines, 1899, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Theodore Roosevelt and Commodore Ju George Dewey, they went to my country, they came to my country to drive out the Spaniard fleet, the Spanish people. That's why you notice my last name is Domingo, which is uh, the Spanish for Sunday. Because for 400 years, my people were under their ruler, their, their rule, the Philippines, for 400 years, imagine. But 1899, the Americans came in, in a bay called Manila Bay, which is our capital in the Philippines. And th this, this was the place where, defeated, where they defeated the Spaniards' fleet, Spanish fleet, and then eventually defeated them and drove them out of the country, of my country. And that's why I thank America for giving us the liberty. And you know, folks, during a war, I said that to make this point, that during wars, the most important place in the country is the capital. Here in America, the most important place is Washington, D.C. And you have watched movies, read books about wars and all that, that if they take Washington, D.C., they would be able to take all over the country and conquer you because that is the most important territory. And here, folks, I said that to make this point, that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this is our fundamental doctrine. This is very important. This is the most, I would say, the most important territory in the Bible that you need to understand, that you need to grasp. If you would be able to understand that there is a resurrection, that Jesus is alive, resurrected from the dead, then you would be able to grasp everything in the Bible. Believe on it. Put your faith on it. Trust in it. And here, folks, we're going to see that this is very vital in the life of the believer. The whole Bible revolves around this truth, the resurrection. If you remove the doctrine of resurrection, then there would be no Christianity at all. Nothing. And here are the seven downsides if there was no resurrection. Number one then Christ is not alive, then Jesus is not alive. Paul said, How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen, then Jesus is not risen, then Jesus stayed dead. Then I want to tell you this, then that what, what Jesus said about him being the resurrection and the life is all but a lie. When he said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me shall not die, but live again. And then he called Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, four days dead, rose again. He became alive again. Then Jesus is a liar when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. If there is no resurrection, if there is no resurrection... Then those people who mocked, him, who mocked him and accused him of being a fraud were right. The Pharisees, and they, when Jesus said, I am the Son of God, I am the Son of Man, and these Pharisees were mocking him and telling him that he is a fraud, then those Pharisees were right if there is no resurrection. Then he is just the same of this religion all around us, Religious founders, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, and all those people who said they are gods, 
and started these religions around us, then Jesus is just the same with them. He is just on the same level with them if he did not rise from the dead. Number two, then our preaching is vain. In verse 14, it says, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. All the people that think we are fools because of our preaching are right then, because there is no resurrection. If there is no resurrection, the president in my school, it was recorded that he had 40,000 sermons. Imagine 40,000 sermons preaching. He was, he's already preaching for more than 65 years. And I, and I thought, if he only had 30,000 sermons, that's still 30,000. And if he only had 1,000 sermons, I said, that's still 1,000 sermons. That's still a lot. And if Christ be not risen, then all those 40,000 sermons are all but nothing. They are but in vain. The thousands and thousands of sermons by Charles Spurgeon in London, wherein when he, when he was only 23 years old, thousands of people come just to hear him, are all but nothing if Christ is not risen from the dead, if there is no resurrection. All the efforts of George Whitfield coming here to America from settlement to settlement, preaching the gospel while riding a horse, while holding a Bible on his right hand, and bringing with him a Matthew Henry commentary from settlement to settlement, preaching the gospel of Christ, is all but nothing if there is no resurrection. All the efforts of William Carey in 1793 going to India to preach to thousands of people that cost thousands of people to get saved is all but nothing if the resurrection did not happen. And folks, let me tell you this. All the preaching that you have heard from this pulpit, from the pastors that stood here and preached God's word faithfully, studied for it, spent their life, exhausted their time, studying and trying to ask the Lord, what is your message for your people? And praying to God, Lord, you speak to me so I could deliver you the message coming from you to your people is all but nothing. It's vain. It's worthless. It's empty if there is no resurrection. All the sacrifices of all these great missionaries to be away from home, from their families, to just adapt to different cultures, to new food, new climate, and all these sacrifices are all but nothing. I've seen here earlier in your lobby that you, su you support missionaries. And all their efforts in Africa, Mongolia, Southeast Asia, South America, is all but nothing. It's in vain. Their preaching is in vain if there is no resurrection. Not only that, Number three, our preaching is our faith is vain. Then our faith is vain. It's useless. It's worthless. Think of all the times you practice your faith, folks. Now, today, you are practicing your faith. I don't know who here is the longest member of the church or the oldest member. How long have you been here? I don't know, but this is only my second time. But Think of all those times you came here faithfully, waking up early in the morning, trying to prepare your clothes, your dress during Saturday nights, ironing them and all that, preparing, cooking for your children while looking for the missing, part, missing sock for your child. All those mornings, all those nights that you came here, Wednesday prayer meetings, all those VBS that you have done faithfully because you've practiced your faith, are all but nothing. Think of all the words that came out of your mouth when you said, Lord, help me. Lord, this is what I need. Lord, I praise you. All the words that came out of your mouth to praise God, to worship God, to sing the doxology, all the times you have given to that offering plate because you are, you are practicing your faith on the Lord. It's all but nothing if there is no resurrection. Think about that. What is faith? Faith 
is forsaking all, I trust him. That is an acronym that I got from a preacher in Knoxville. Forsaking all, I trust him. Folks, our faith is in vain if there is no resurrection. Not only that, then the apostles were false witnesses. Number four, see, we're fast, right? We're already at number four. Then the apostles were false witnesses. In verse 15, Paul said, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Here, Paul is giving us a sarcastic tune. I am a sarcastic person, so I know when a person is sarcastic. But here, Paul is sarcastic. He's, he said, Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Then the apostle Peter would have been a dirty liar when he preached during the day of Pentecost that caused 3,000 souls to be saved. Folks, all the things that they have preached mightily are all in vain. They are false witnesses. They are liars. If the resurrection did not happen, Paul would have been a liar when he preached in Athens to these ignorant, pagan, idolatrous people, Greek knowledge-seeking philosophers. In Mars Hill, when he said, let me talk to you about this unknown God whom ye ignorantly worship. Because in Athens, they have statues after statues after statues of idols. And people are worshiping these idols, man-made idols. And there is one inscription writing on one of these things that says, to the unknown God. And Paul said, let me talk to you about this unknown God whom ye ignorantly worship. And then he went ahead and said, this is the God who created all things. You can read it on your own time in Acts chapter 17. But folks, if the resurrection did not happen, then these apostles, these disciples were false witnesses. They are but dirty liars when they preach about Jesus Christ and him risen from the dead. Then those statues of idols, statutes of idols, dead, man-made, molden things are just the same with God. Then God is just the same with them. If there is no resurrection, they are dead. They have ears, they have eyes. I said I have, they have ears. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, and yet they cannot hear. They have mouth, and yet they cannot speak. But folks, if there is no resurrection, then Jesus is just the same with those dead idols in whom Paul preached unto the people of Athens. Then Philip the evangelist would have been a liar when he said to the Ethiopian eunuch in the desert, Understandest thou what thou readest? Are you understanding? Can you understand what you are reading? When the, Philip asked him that and went ahead and exposed to him the scripture in Isaiah chapter 56, which, which talks about Christ, the suffering Savior. And then eventually that Ethiopian eunuch got saved and got baptized. But folks, let me tell you this. All these preachings, all these apostles, disciples, the preachers that stood here are all but false witnesses if, if there is no resurrection, if the resurrection did not happen. Not only that, number five, Paul said in verse 15, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. You are still in your sins. We are still slaves under the bondage of sin. All the stain and filthiness, sicknesses and wickedness of sin is still within us. We are still a slave under it. We are still living according to the course of this world. We are still in the family of the devil. Remember, Jesus said in John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil. Folks, if the resurrection did not happen, we are still part of the family of the devil. We are still guilty before God. We are still condemned to experience the wrath of God. 
What is the wrath of God? The wrath of God is separation from Him. Hell! Spiritually separated for eternity. Without the presence of God. You can... Folks, if the resurrection did not happen, think about this. We are still in our sins. You are still in your sin. And the most sad of all is that we will die in our sins. Imagine that. You will die in your sins if there is no resurrection. If there is no resurrection. And then number six, those who died in Christ are perished. In verse 18, then they also which are fallen asleep, those who died first in Christ are perished. Folks, think of all those ones who went before us. Those Christian believers, all those church forefathers who died in their faith, now they are lost. They are burning in hell for 2,000 years. If there is no resurrection, think about that. Think about it. All those few million people who died because of their faith, those Christians who were eaten by lions as an entertainment by the Roman people, hanged and burned at the stake because of their faith. Imagine. Today, in the 21st century, there is a study that says more than 45 million Christians are martyred or died because of their faith. Imagine 45 million people lost, perished, burning in hell if, again, if there is no resurrection. Not only that, all the great testimonies of faithful men are in vain because they are lost if there is no resurrection. The ones that are recorded in Fox's Book of Martyrs that were persecuted because of their faith, it's nothing, they are lost if there is no resurrection. And lastly, Paul said, we are of all men most miserable. In verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. We are of all men most pitiable. We are pathetic. We are poor. Folks, we live faithfully for the Lord because we know that we will have a reward someday right? You live faithfully in the present time because you believe one day you have that hope in your heart that you will see Jesus face to face. You serve him faithfully because you know one day Christ will come and give you your reward, all those crowns, because you faithfully served him all these years. You help the church sing, do the bell, what else? Clean the church, greet people. You do it faithfully because you have a hope in your heart that one day everything is not in vain. But folks, listen to this. We are of all men most miserable if there is no resurrection. Everything that you are doing today is nothing. Why anticipate the future glory if the Suffering during the present time is all but nothing. It's all but in vain. It's empty. It's worthless. It doesn't have any value if, again, there is no resurrection. But if Christ is not risen from the dead, then that means all hope for the future is lost. If there is no future, then the present is worthless. We are, most men, most miserable because we are doing today, what we are doing today is going to end up to nothingness, to nothing, to zero. Then the ones outside who laughed at us, who mocked us because we dress up every Sunday and go to church, and we try to talk to them about Christ, to your children, and try to bring them to the church and bring them to the Lord, while they are laughing at us, mocking us because of our faith, folks, then they are right. If there is no resurrection, then we are all but foolish men that built our foundation on the sinking sand because our hope is nothing. Our hope is worthless. 
our labor and suffering and serving are all but in vain if there is no resurrection. Now, listen. There is a resurrection, amen? There is a resurrection. That's why Paul went ahead and said, How say some among you in the church? How come we preach to you Christ? We preach to you the resurrection? We preach to you the gospel that Jesus was dead, buried, and then and he rose again the third day? How come people in the church believe, not believing the resurrection? That's why Paul went ahead and defended it and said, there is a resurrection. Folks, our hope needs a foundation. And that foundation is based on the truth of the gospel, on the resurrected Christ. And folks, let me tell you this. Those who died in Christ will live again. Amen? Because Christ rose from the dead. Look on verse 51. Verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery, the mystery of resurrection. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. In verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The death, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Folks, listen to this. Christ rose from the dead. And you need to grasp, man, and understand that the resurrection is real. This is not just a myth or just a bedtime story for children. Resurrection is real. It's true. It's 100% genuine. Folks, this is, what, this is why Paul defended it to these people in the church who did not believe in the resurrection. Jesus is risen from the dead. And then in verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul went ahead and encouraged the Corinthian church that your labor is not in vain because the resurrection is real and it will happen again for those who died before us. Then, folks, if the resurrection is real, the number one, Jesus is alive. Amen? Jesus is not a liar. Jesus is not on the same level with the ones who said, I am God, and, and then died and did not rise again from the dead. Jesus is alive. Our, my Savior is alive. That's why we sing, He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. I serve a risen Savior. He rose, He arose. That's why we, saw, we sing all these great hymns about this resurrection, because Jesus is alive. Amen? Number two, our preaching is not in vain. All those times that your pastor, preacher, friend, Sunday school teacher went ahead and studied and exhausted all their life and time in Scripture, is not in vain. Their preaching is not in vain. Because the resurrection has happened. Not only that, all the efforts of the missionaries that went around the world, I want to thank you because the American people sent missionaries to the Philippines. And that's why I am here today. Because of the work of all those missionaries. I got saved under the work of a missionary. American missionary. And I thank the Lord for those people who sacrificed their life and folks, their preaching is not in vain because the resurrection has happened, because Jesus is alive. Our faith is not in vain. All those times you came here and practiced your faith is not in vain. Everything that you have given to the Lord is not in vain. All those words that you have sang to praise God and to worship the living God is not in vain. And everything that you are doing today for the Lord, for the church, for his people is not in vain. Your faith is not in vain. 
And then the, the apostles are not false witnesses. They are true believers. They are real witnesses. They, everything that they had said about Christ is true. They are not false witnesses. And then, number five, we are not in our sins anymore because the resurrection has happened. Imagine, folks, we are now freed from our sins. Here in America, based on my observation for the past four years that I, I was here, you have freedom. And people really want to fight for freedom, right? And you, you have freedom. But in other places around the world, they don't have any freedom. They don't have any freedom to practice their faith. They don't have any freedom to say anything they want to say, to protest. They don't have any freedom. But folks, today, if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior and what He has done on the cross, you are not in your sins anymore. You are freed from your sins. You are not slave under your sins anymore, but you are now a slave of the living God a servant of the living God. Amen? And not only that, but number six, those who died in Christ, those who went before us, those people who knew, who you knew here in this church, who, who went before us, are not lost. They are not in hell suffering today. They are not in hell burning and screaming, yelling in pain. No, but they are with the Lord. Amen? They are worshiping God face to face. They are singing for the Lord with the angels, singing amazing grace. Think about that. They are not lost, but they are with the Lord. They are not perished. And not only that, last, last of all, we are not of all men most miserable. We are not pitiable, but we are of all men most blessed. We are of all men most blessed. Folks, being a Christian is the most blessed thing. Being a son of God, being a part of the family of God is the most blessed thing. I am blessed to come here to America to study, but I am more blessed that I am part of the fam family of God, that I am his child, and I can always call to him my father, Abba, Father, in, every, in any time of the day. We are not of all men most miserable, but we are of all men most blessed. You know why? Because there is a resurrection, amen? Because Jesus has risen from the dead. And wear those beautiful smiles again because you are serving a living Savior. You're singing for a living Savior. And one day, one day, our hope will be fulfilled, amen? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. My preacher, he said, we are troubled. Our heart is troub troubled because you let it tro be troubled. P Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And then he went ahead in John chapter 14. He said, I will come again and seek you unto myself and bring you unto myself. And wherever I am, there ye may be also. That is our hope that one day we will be with the Lord. Amen. Folks, let me tell you this. America, it's getting worse. As I try to observe all these shootings, all these things that, that are happening, last month I researched about it. There are already 246 shootings just last month. I don't, I don't know how many we have now today, but I don't want to be, I don't want to get political, but folks, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. But we have that hope in our heart. Amen? We have that hope in our heart that one day, even if, if it gets worse, if we die in our faith, we have that hope that we will see Jesus. Amen? That we will rise again from the dead. And this incorruptible body, this corruptible body will put on incorruptible. This mortal body who is weak, weak full of sicknesses and problems, will one day, no more arthritis, no more sleepiness, right? No more hunger, nothing. No more bad eyesight. One day, it will be perfect. It will be incorruptible. It will be immortal because there is 
a resurrection. And then in verse 58, let me, let me read it again and then we will end. Verse 58, Paul said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, abounding, abundant life, Baptist Church, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your work, that your labor is not in vain, it's not in vain in the Lord, because there is a resurrection. Let's pray. Father, I come before you once again, and we thank you, Lord, because we serve a risen Savior, because we know that our God is alive, and God, in everything that we are doing for you today, is not in vain, because there is a resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing this to us, and help us, Lord, to grasp it, to really embrace it with all our hearts, to put our trust in it, our faith on it, that Jesus is alive and risen from the dead. And if there is someone here who is still lost, who is still in their sins, Lord, I pray that you convict that person of their sin, that they may put their faith on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that they might see life in him, and they will be also be saved. Once again, Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.